Right, um, hi, I'm sorry. No, go on. Uh, my name's Sean McDonough. I'm a team leader at Vestas. I've worked here for three years. And I'm organising things for the guys on the inside on the outside. Okay, and... Hi, my name's Matt Scanlon. Um, Vestas work. I've worked here five years. Uh, as part of the occupation for a couple of days. So I'm now on the outside. So, um, first question really is, uh, what reason have the Vestas um, bosses given for, for closing the factory? Um, basically, they say there's not enough demand in uh, Northern Europe for their product, and so they've got surplus manufacturing capacity. Um, however, there is a demand for their product. Uh, it's just a case of the government putting their finger out, sort of planning laws. Um, getting sorted. Uh, another thing, Ed Miliband wrote to the Guardian the other day and said that the blades that we produce here are not suitable for the British Isles, but they are, they're onshore blades. So unless he means that the future wind turbines are only going to be offshore, they're perfectly suited for onshore because they're onshore or rain weather. So this is just a, uh, something that I heard today. I heard on the radio one of the uh, workers said the government have said they're going to put a £6 million grant into... into is it, can you confirm this at all? I've just heard that, yeah. Um, apparently that's been out on Wave 105, which is a local news channel, radio. Um, yeah, that, is, that has been pledged today. But that's a small drop in the ocean as far as I'm concerned, that's not... So what would you what would you say the government should be doing at the moment in order to save, save well, this factory and the, the workers' jobs? Primarily, we really want the government to step in and nationalise the company. Or a private investor company without investors. Um, that is mainly what the guys at the point they're trying to make there. I mean, what, have they got specific demands or something? Yeah, sure, that is their first, basically that is their first yeah. demand, isn't it? And then secondly, it's um, well, to, to Just to, to nationalise or to... nationalise or somebody else to step in. I mean, ideally, let it be run as a cooperative. I mean, that would be my ideal situation. Let it run, but not have the management that we've had in there, but have the guys on the shop floor electing a management that are on the same pay as everybody else. Do it as a proper cooperative. I think that would just so, be... just tell me a little bit about what life was like in the factory. You um, say you don't want the existing management no, there. No, Why is that? We've, we've just been bullied, bullied, and bullied. It's, you, investors have come into a, a low economy, you know, a poor economy, paying very good wages, and uh, they've really worked on that because if you don't like it, it's you're out the door. You know, there's the door. You don't have to be here, yeah. and people have been scared into staying. They, they mm. just push people down. They break them. And you just you sort of end up you're like a, a mindless robot, you know. You just feel how do they no do it? Up. What sort of how do they do it in the factory? Uh, basically, you know, if there's anybody that wants to sort of stand up for themselves, they will find a way of getting you out the door. Yeah. You know, if you don't run with their system, then you're a problem to them, and they look at that and they will find an excuse to get you out. Have you seen that happen in the past? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, do you have a union in the factory? No, I think there was only about 15 union members, you know, that's the figure I had. In the past, uh, union members have been singled out right. and um, sort of some kind of uh, situation has been engineered where they've uh, been sacked uh, in the last round of redundancy, so the union guys went as well. Really? That's a classic, that one, isn't it? Yeah. So what, what do you, what's your feelings now about if you, if the factory was reopened, how would you in, how would you organise so that you're not in a situation where managers can pick on individuals? Definitely happy. Yeah, that's one lesson to be learned. Maybe now, if we we'd all go in, maybe as the RMT or one, you know, one government body, I think we'd go in there as a hell of a strong workforce, mm. a happy workforce, which is what we should have deserved, anyway, isn't it? Yeah. We've got good boys in there. I hear. Yeah, um, and girls, sorry. I've heard the RMT have all made you honorary members. <laughs> yeah, uh, without their help, from my perspective, this, I don't think we would have got off the ground as well. We've had a lot of help from different parties in this, but from my perspective, we needed that guidance because we we've never done this before. Mm. And, you know, we were well out of our depth at the beginning of this, but we, we soon established ourselves with their guidance. And, uh, we're doing all right. <laughs> I think. You are. So how, tell me then, how did how did the whole thing actually start? Uh, well, uh, workers' climate action. You've uh, done enough now. The shift changes to talk to some of the guys, and um, a few of us realised we could do something. It was a public meeting uh, that a few people attended, and from that a committee was formed of workers. When was this? Um, it was last, last Friday, and then yeah, last so it's Friday. All quite, we, we it's all quite recent meeting. then, yeah? Oh yeah, Saturday there was a meeting at your place, That's it, yeah. Sunday there was a meeting at my place, 
and the rest is history. <laughs> so how did you, what, yeah. so you had your meeting and you decided from that meeting that that was a tactic to occupy the, the factory? Yeah, sure. The, well, the, the original plan was to occupy both sites, East Cowles and Chiquitos, where I work, and St Cross, where that works. Um, on Monday when we were turned back to work at Venture Keys, a couple of the guys... Were, Just to clarify, are you, are you still technically employed by Vestas then? Still Vestas, being paid, yeah. Yeah, 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 Vestas, sure. sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, still being paid? Still being paid, yeah. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, on Monday when we were back to work, a couple of guys that thought we'd be trusted because we needed to get more people involved, mm. but being very careful, turned out to be uh, super grasses and they went no. to management. Um, really? So our plans got totally blown out the water, there? there was an emergency meeting at four o'clock in the park. This is on the Monday? On the Monday. Cause how did you, how did you find out that they told the management? Because my manager came up to me, luckily I have a good relationship with my manager, she's a good girl, and um, she told me that I'd been fingered. And she asked me if it was true, and of course I had to say no. At that point, my absolute guts went, because I thought, if this doesn't go ahead, at this precise moment in time, I'm the only person that's mm. been instigated. So have we got this. the names and addresses of these people? They know who they are, and they're already, <laughs> I've heard one of them is suffering from panic attacks at the moment. So, uh, yeah, there you go. But actually what they've done for us without knowing is an absolute favour, because if we'd gone with our original plan and taken both sides, I'm not sure we would have got it this far. Yeah, so why, do, why do you think that then? Um, just because of the communications between both sides and trying to get the media attention.